Good morning, Ruby Roses. It's early, it's early doors, 8 a.m. Motoring out of the anchorage. Last night was actually okay. I kind of, um, I still am a bit jumpy about the anchor. I'm not gonna lie to you, that, that, that kind of like event in Thailand scared the out of me. And so, just as a, what we do is we always leave a plotter on and with a track going because actually the best way of knowing if you're dragging is actually not an anchor alarm. It is to see the track of your plotter. So you can see, like it forms with time, you can see a crescent of swing, which is a really great name for a band, <laughs> actually, the crescents of swing. Anyway, so yeah, so you can see a crescent of swing and if you stop swinging and start dragging, you then see a line coming out of your crescent of swing, which is good. But the problem is that when the wind changes direction, that kind of crescent increases. And the other point is that when you get gusts of wind, the anchor chain kind of pulls straight, so it pushes back a little bit. So I was a little bit jumpy last night, but honestly, yeah, the jumpiness has actually got nothing. It's just to do with me being slightly paranoid. Well, paranoid, just paranoid and probably rightly so. Anyway, so this morning it is eight o'clock. We have got a big day ahead of us. I know that basically you need to be tucked in by about two o'clock in the afternoon. Otherwise, if you've got the winds, the winds will pick up and we are sailing straight into it. Good feeling to be on the move again. As lovely as this Anchorage was, and it really was truly lovely. Are you putting us into overdrive? Right in reverse. Why not? Let me go forward. Love that overdrive function on our glory props. So good. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we'd love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. There you go. This is our breakfast every day, not because we're on some kind of cruel health kick, just because we like smoothies and they're relatively it's easy. Cold, it's tasty. Exactly, cold and tasty and filling and easy. Nutritious. Nutritious, quick to make. So this is a banana smoothie. So all of our lines uh, have been drying on the line, like a row of octopuses drying in the sun. So now it's time to bring them all in. Nick uh, washed them and conditioned them yesterday using our bin, uh, our line bins, which is genius. He just plugged the hole, the draining hole, with an earplug and just used it as like a big bucket. So we've washed our lines so they're no longer stiff and salty because they became very stiff and salty and dirty from the shipping, from the crossing. So now we've got lovely soft lines that smell like fabric softener. I've been thinking, whoever cut Nick's hair, I don't know if he did a great job, but it's very uneven, but <laughs> now it all makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And we are sailing. Ooh. We've actually got a bit of a wind on the beam, so I'm gonna enjoy that while we can, because as I've said a few times in the last episode or two, going to be a lot of upwind sailing in our near future and then hopefully later in the season there won't be any in fact I'm hoping there'll be some downwind sailing after the upwind sailing anyway point being right now we've got a beautiful beam reach going on the only issue which we can easily solve is that one of the battens fell out of our jib now 
I filmed a couple of episodes ago, I think, um, us hoisting the jib again after it's uh, kind of, we had to take it down to ship the boat. And we put it up after much kind of swearing and sweating. We got it up and we realized we hadn't put the buttons in. So we're like, brilliant. At that point, the battery in the camera died. So we turned off the camera and we let it down again, put the buttons in and off we went. So as we were putting the buttons in, we were kind of saying, cause you have to put, um, oh, I don't know what you call it. There's like, you put them in a sleeve and then at the bottom of the sleeve, there's like a little loop with Velcro on it, which you use to kind of keep the button in place. Um, and yeah, it didn't look particularly secure, I must say. So I'm not surprised that the button came out, but anyway, we're gonna to have to do this again, clearly. But for now, the button just landed on the deck. <laughs> it's in the cockpit, waiting to be put back in at some point. Not anytime soon, we'll just leave it for the moment. Um, and that's it. So anyway, we're sailing. And believe it or not, that's actually Greece, that island behind me. And Turkey is there. So they really are that close to each other, it's crazy. I think the Greeks got all the islands and the Turks kept the mainland. <laughs> all the islands along this coast belong to Greece. So we get a little view of Greece as we sail on past, but we're still not cleared into Greece. We're very much still in Turkey, um, as far as us and the boat are concerned. So we can't go to Greece without obviously clearing out of Turkey and clearing into Greece because uh, despite the fact that they're literally half a mile apart and at some points along the coast, I think they're even less than that. They're like literally right next to each other. You still have to clear immigration and customs. Jib's splapping a bit. So, uh, Turkish delicacies? Turkish cucumbers. But no, they're cucumbers. As I keep saying, the bloody fresh produce here is so delicious. So the fun thing about having a water maker that's actually working is that we have an infinite supply, or a fairly limitless supply of fresh water. And we have so much solar and we're running the engines, we have almost a limitless supply of electricity. Which means that with three hours to go and a calm sea, I can just clean the boat with a jet wash, which I think is freaking amazing. So I will now be power washing. Exactly. a question on our Patreon group about the sail bag on the 13th century and what stops the sail from spilling out the uh, the back end and actually there are two loops and we had a line on there and the line had a half hitch to the what's it called the top of it and it's gone it's gone so I need to make another one so for those of you new to sailing cutting a line tape scissors creme brulee torch You put the, um, the tape around to stop the line from fraying immediately. This is for the sail bag. Basically, I've just put uh, two turns and a half inch on this. All right, it's just gone one o'clock, and I think the afternoon winds are starting to pick up a little bit. Seems to be the cut a little bit. Nice and calm in the morning, and then in the afternoon, things start to get a little bit brisker. So we're going to crack on. There is an anchorage literally right over here that I was actually really hoping to go to, right behind me there, because it's got these ancient Greek ruins. Uh, there's a big ancient Greek amphitheater and some other ruins there. And I was like, that's cool. It's like literally right next to the anchorage. So I was excited about doing that. But I think at the end of the day, um, we should crack on while the conditions allow, because I think we're at some point going to get kind of come up against some stronger headwinds and it's going to be a little bit more challenging so I think making as much 
northward progress as we can while the conditions allow is a good thing. We'll be coming back this way anyway. It's all good. Put a reef in. I know. Good grief. After all morning motoring in like milky calm conditions, it is now 20 knots. We've got white caps everywhere. It is beautiful, but it was like that. One minute we were just motoring along and the next minute I could see white caps kind of on the horizon. And then two minutes later, the wind hit. That's crazy. Might even need to put a reef in. Now the wind speed stopped. Now they've slowed down a bit. That's all right. Okay. That was a bit of a hectic few minutes. Same for, for you, exactly. I can see some other boats out here enjoying the conditions. Well, this is exactly what I remember from family holidays in the Greek islands. We'd go on a boat trip early morning, we'd go out and it'd be like, yeah, this is nice, this is nice. And then we'd have to come back to a o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon and we'd get shellacking. And this is exactly what happens. The wind picks up in the afternoon. And because we're sailing a sailing boat, Sod's law means that we're always going into it. So we have 24 knots over the deck, which is actually a little bit lighter. We had 31 before banging out some tunes. We have our anchors about five, six miles away. We'll hopefully get anchored without too much shenanigans. I think we've decided from here on in, because I know after all the years of being here, that this is the afternoon weather. What we will do is we're gonna set an alarm, get up at first light, get off at four, about half past five, and then we can be tied up by about one when this all picks up. That's the plan. We just need to get up to Fokker and we knew it would be a slog and we knew we would get hammered by the wind in the afternoon. Tonight's anchorage is uh, proning into view. We're only about three or four miles away now. And this is gonna be a very good test for our microphone, which we'll be replacing as soon as I possibly can. It's still a beautiful day. It's very windy, but it is a beautiful day. Get yourself anchored up by lunch on if you have to put windward. Yeah. Downwind, you're like, get out at bloody 11am and bloody get the spinnaker up. Okay, we're anchored. I'll show you the anchorage. It's very breezy out there. It's blowing 23 knots at the moment. Nick's just doing the windows. Ooh. Got some very keen windsurfers out and about enjoying the conditions. Our anchor dug in, hurled first time. Got that very satisfying kind of swing. It's very flat in here, very comfortable. I wouldn't even know that it was blowing outside. So, yep, I'm happy. I am just finishing off my laundry because the washing machine doesn't seem to like being on while we're underway. Errors a lot. And I think it's just the like movement of the water in the washing machine or in the pipes or something doesn't like it. There's some kind of issue. So soon enough, we will be settling down for an evening. Now, one thing I would say, probably the greatest thing about YouTube mm -hmm. is that people actually know the boat and therefore know us. And so when we get into an anchorage, we possibly get invited a little bit more, but not necessarily any more, to go and have drinks on people's boats than we would if we didn't have a YouTube channel. So the, honestly, we rocked up in an anchorage day and we got invited on board like a boat just for drinks. And we had a really lovely evening. And it's just so nice 
just to meet another couple of cruisers and to exchange information, to exchange ideas, to exchange weather patterns, to exchange where to anchor, to exchange marinas, where to buy rope. So Craig and Donna, thank you for a very, very, very lovely evening. It's just been a real pleasure. And actually, it kind of reminds me of what I miss about cruising and what I, what I really missed about the Caribbean cruising where every night, and this is way before YouTube, we'd have a group of friends and you'd arrange to go onto a boat and have a party and yeah, really nice evening. But I need to cook your dinner because otherwise you're gonna get all twitchy eyed on me. Hey. I've trained so well. Um, okay guys, well, I think that this is where we're going to finish up this week's episode. I hope that you've enjoyed coming sailing with us today. We had a bit of everything. We had like literally, motoring along because there wasn't enough winter sail and then we we're motoring along because there was too much winter sail and we had everything in between next week's episode we are continuing our journey north towards Fokker which is where we are getting in touch with the sea wind team and we will be just finishing off any warranty issues that we still have outstanding we've got a few items on the spreadsheet it's just doing a quick little tidy and clean in the background so please hit the subscribe button to join us for next week's uh, sale. We really appreciate everyone who subscribes to our channel. It really does help and that's why we say it so often. So if you do like our videos, if you enjoy sailing around the med and uh, you want to see more of our videos, then please, please hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below, of course, and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.